So my assignment this morning uh, was a difficult one, and it's to describe when not to do T-bar despite favorable anatomy. And I difficult because it's hard to find areas where you shouldn't use a less evasive approach, even though the anatomy makes it feasible. So here are a few situations I came up with where T-bar should not be placed despite favorable anatomy, uh, favorable anatomy and their relative contraindications. Uh, the first, and I'll go into detail later in the talk, but patients with connective tissue disease, patients with acute type B dissection that is uncomplicated when there is an unstable aorta in the first two weeks, the young and healthy patient that has many years to live, infection or bacteremia that's not related to aortic pathology, patients that are not medically fit due to acute illness, extreme age, extreme comorbidities, or patients with very limited life expectancy, children that are still growing, and patients that have no indication for repair of the thoracic aorta. So starting with connective tissue disease and TVAR, most of these patients that we deal with have usually Marfans or Lily Dietz. These patients have a high rate of complications and the Dreaded complication of placing a T-bar in these patients is the retrograde type A dissection, which I'll go into uh, a little bit further. These patients tend to fail over time at the attachment sites. So in general, for patients with connective tissue disease that's known, we try to do open repair. Here's a case of a 52-year-old male with known Marfans. He went to one of the outside hospitals in New York about one year prior to when he presented to us, he had a T-bar for an acute dissection. Um, we don't know the actual details, but he came back. Uh, you can see with this CAT scan where there's dilation of the aorta and loss of the attachment sites. And you can see by the yellow arrows, he clearly has a type one leak here that need to be repaired. And he actually got repaired with open surgery by our cardiac colleagues. I do think TVAR can be considered in patients with connective tissue disease as a bridge in life-threatening bleed or ischemia, uh, or patients who have a prohibitive open risk and an indicated thoracic procedure. This is a case, not mine, but a case of acute type B dissection that was uh, treated in the first two weeks. Um, the major risk, of course, is the dreaded retrograde type A dissection. And on the left, you can see the stent graft in place. It looks like he does have a good neck uh, covering that left subclavian. So he had good anatomy, but a little difficult to see, but this patient uh, had a type A dissection caused by the stent graft and needed an open repair of the ascending aorta. Here's a second similar case that you can see a little bit better. Um, he does look like he has a, a decent neck again past the left subclavian. In the middle, you can see the stent graft in place. And then the figure on the right by the yellow arrow, you can see the type A dissection caused by the uh, stent graft. And these are lethal uh, processes. The type A dissection is usually caused by the unstable aorta and the prongs or uh, metal usually of the stent graft as seen on the left by the arrows poking through and causing that entry tear and dissection, uh, which can ultimately lead to tamponade and death. So TVAR can be considered in the first two weeks with acute type B dissection um, as a bridge in a life-threatening bleed or ischemia. The next would be a young and healthy patient. Uh, TVAR requires long-term follow-up imaging. Duplex uh, or ultrasound, unfortunately, cannot penetrate the uh, aortic wall. So these patients usually need CAT scans over time, which entails radiation, uh, which can have a cancer risk, and the multiple doses of contrast can lead to contrast nephropathy and a, a, a renal risk. So in the very young and healthy, we strongly considered open repair. I do think you can use TVAR in the young and healthy patients, certainly in a life-threatening bleed or ischemia. Um, you can use it in elective cases as long as the patient understands the full risks and protocols. If you do put a stent graft in a young and healthy patient, 
I think you should consider putting a night null stent graft in so that the availability of MRE for follow-up will be there. There's no radiation and the gadolinium does not hurt the kidneys. Patients that have infection that does not involve the aorta, um, such as a UTI, pneumonia, active COVID, those patients should not have a T-bar placed at the time. I do think they can have a T-bar placed after the infection is uh, clear. If there is a life-threatening bleed or ischemia again, that does not hold true. Um, if the aneurysm is presumed infected, we place a stent graft, again, usually as a bridge, and these patients will stay antibiotics, stay on antibiotics. The next class of patients are those that are not medically fit, secondary to an acute illness, those that had an acute MI, acute post acute uh, COPD exacerbation, acute CH, uh, CHF. Uh, you wait until the acute insult has resolved. Again, life-threatening situation, bleeding or ischemia, uh, you can place T-bars in these patients. Patients that uh, are extremely old, have a very short life expectancy, um, and where the operative risk is higher than the operative, uh, the uh, risk of the aortic pathology, those patients uh, should not have T-bar. I do think the T-bar can be considered, again, life-threatening bleed or ischemia. And those, even if they're old and have a limited life expectancy, if the aortic pathology is causing them pain and a decreased quality of life, uh, then it would be okay. In growing children, fixing aortic pathology in the, in the chest can be difficult with T-bar, likely due to the size of the endograft. Most endografts do not come small enough for growing uh, children. The aorta will continue to grow, which will cause a problem with attachment sites. Uh, so in most cases for children, we would consider open surgery. T-bar can be considered in a child if there's a life-threatening bleed or ischemia, once again, as a bridge to open repair. You do have to have an indication for uh, repair. There must be a clear indication other than the anat anatomy is appropriate. Uh, the threshold for performing TVAR should never be lowered because the anatomy is good. So in general, don't fix small thoracic aneurysms, small asymptomatic ulcers, just because they're there and you can put a stent graft in. So in conclusion, unless emergent before placing a TVAR, uh, despite the patient having a good uh, anatomy, think hard in patients that have connective tissue disease, acute type B dissections that are uncomplicated and less than two weeks old in the very young and healthy patient, patients with infection not involving the aorta, those not medically fit secondary to acute or chronic uh, conditions, and growing children and patients without a good reason for repair. And I thank you for your time.